Hey, what's up guys? Rudolanel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials, and we're still looking at the unit curses module. Now, in this video, I think we've gotten farther enough and we, we understand enough concepts with unit curses to build, finally, a sort of, like, player object, or a, a class that'll allow us to move around in our, in our little screen and in, in our world here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and save this main function, that I, or at least this main Python file, and rewrite it to player.python. And I'll get rid of all this junk. And we don't need the shebang line because we don't plan on running this. But we're going to want to include the actual Unicurses library and the functions that we've created and set up. So, let's go ahead and create our class. Remember, this is going to be our player. That's what I'll call mine. And it obviously needs a constructor. Okay, and now we'll get into the arguments that we can pass into our constructor. So I want to make some of these optional because we don't need to create all the stuff that we need to, but we do obviously need like a, a body or the character that our, that our player will look like. And we're going to need to know actually some information from the standard screen, but only a little bit of information. And practically every object that you create is going to need to know this information. We just need to know the maximum screen width and the maximum screen height. But that's all we need. So we're going to actually get that information and then immediately delete the standard screen. But we're going to have to pass it in. We need the standard screen. We need a body. And we're going to need a foreground. And that's going to be optional. We'll need a background. And that's also going to be optional. And we're going to want an attribute. And that's going to be optional. Okay. So let's actually get to work now we're going to want to keep track of the maximum x value and the maximum y value. So, it's going to be our standard screen dot get max y x. And uh, I think that's how the function works. I, I got to refresh my memory. I think it's just, just an array that it will return. And y can be over here. And we're subtracting 1 from the index, from the integer that we're, that's returned to us because that's the offset, that's the maximum that we can go, so we want to be able to prevent it from going, we want to prevent our player from going outside of the screen, because that will cause an error. Okay, now let's actually set our player's coordinates, self.x, that's going to equal self.maxx divided by 2, so we'll put him in the center of the screen to start with, and self.y is going to be that exact same thing, and our self.body is just going to equal the body that we've added. That we've passed into the function here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the standard screen. Now I'm going to want to create the object, or our player. So I'm just going to make this little divider for us here. So it's window. It's going to equal a new window, obviously. We want it to be 1, 1, self.y self.x, because that's where it's starting. So now, we'll add string, uh, no, uh, sorry, it's the window that we want to do, window add string, self.window, and we're going to pass in the body that we've set up, self.body, and then we need to create a, pan a panel for this, so self.panel is going to equal new panel self.window. Now we actually want to keep track of the background and the foreground integers, or the, those constants that we've set up here. So self.foreground, that's going to equal the foreground that we've passed in. Very easy, simple stuff. Background's that same way. And the color, remember, we typically are keeping track of with um, numbers, or at least the index or the ID for each fun the each, each color that we create with our make color function that we just created in the last video. So for now, we haven't specified the color, so we're going to set that to equal zero. And I'm going to test whether or not our foreground and our background are the optional values, because if they aren't, then we're going to want to set that up. So if the foreground is not equal to null, I'm sorry, none, and the background is not equal to none, 
then we'll go ahead and actually apply the colors that we want to have in here. Self dot set colors foreground and background. Now self dot set colors that function we haven't created yet but we're going to very very soon and especially after that we're going to do something called show changes and show changes is just going to be a, a an individual or a local function for our player object to update the screen so self dot show changes we'll add that function in very soon but it's it's very easy okay we'll break out of our constructor and now i'm going to define that set colors function we want to pass in the self variable as always cuz we're working inside of an object background and foreground should go in there And we'll go ahead and let's see self dot color that can be make color foreground and background so our self dot color that's what keeps track of the the number that we're actually creating the pair with self dot foreground that's going to equal foreground self dot background that's going to equal the background so i've only set this up this this looks similar to the constructor but i'm only doing this so in case we ever want to change the the colors we can do that very very easily with this function self dot window no sorry I, i'm thinking i'm in python and then we're going to want to add this to the to the window and self dot body in our case we'll do color pair self dot color and we'll add on our attributes which we should actually keep track of so we'll keep track of that information here self dot attribute can go ahead and equal attribute because we pass that in into our our objects constructor you can see over here in the very very end of the line okay we should specify self dot attribute and then we're going to get go ahead and show the changes nice so we'll go ahead and create that new function there the show changes function and like i told you guys this is very simple All we're doing is those two functions that actually update the screen. Nice. Okay. So our object has been created. Very, very simple. Let's go ahead and actually try it. If I actually get the main function open up, our um, functions here, there's a Python shell. Okay. I'm going to have to open up main as a separate file. Get into Unicurses, open up this main right here. And I will make that visible for us all. Okay. Let's go ahead and import our player. Get rid of all the stuff that I left over. And let's say player. Or at least, um... Hmm. How do I want to set this up? Object player. We'll call him object player. That's going to equal a player. Let's see how well this works. If I'm in my Unicurse directory, I can run the main function, the main program. And, okay, initialize takes three arguments, obviously. We're going to need to pass those in. So, let's pass in our standard screen, our body, Actually, let's just have that be an at symbol, and that'll be our character. I'm going to reset the shell, and uh, there it is. Very, very simple. There is our character right there. That's our player. So let's set him up with some colors. Let's say color red, color background, and let's see. Hopefully this will work. I'm going to reset the shell very quickly, though. 
That gave me an error. Color background is not defined. Oh, duh, of course. Sorry, it should be color black. Reset the shell. Run the function. Okay, we can't add in and, and none. So our int, or sorry, our attribute variable should be zero by default. So let me find our function up here. We'll change this to equal, how about zero? Let's see if that will work. There's our main. I'll get my terminal open. Reset. Run the main script. Okay, and now he's red by default. Good, good, good. Can we make him bold? Let's set that up. Yes, and now it's bold. Awesome. So it's working very, very well. Now, let's actually make the player move. That's all the functionality that we really wanted, right? So this is going to turn into a, a bit of a bigger function. Let's, like, let's get everything ready for that. I'm going to go ahead and define a new function. I'll call it move. And move works by passing in a key, or the key that we've actually created. And we'll also set up a motion variable, as, or at least to determine how much it's moving key and motion, which by default is going to equal one, because we'll only want to move one position or one coordinate at a time. So the way that we set this up is actually we're going to want to make sure we know or at least have decided whether or not we have moved. So that's going to be a Boolean variable, move, and I'm going to set that to false by default. And here's where we start to do some testing. If the key is equal to key up, which is the arrow key, up, obviously, that's been allowed to have run because we use that keypad true function. Keypad true in the in the other file in the beginning when we were always setting up that those information or at least the startup functions. That's what we've allowed to do. We've allowed access to the arrow keys. So we can we can run this. We can test if the key is equal to key up. And now we're gonna test if we're not entirely by the end of the screen. So we'll subtract the motion. If we're not at the very left side of the screen, or the very top side of the screen, sorry, then we can go ahead and move. So move is going to become true, and self.y is going to minus equal motion. Now all we're doing in this, all we're doing with these tests, is we're just moving, or at least changing the number for our position. This is going to obviously be actually set up when we actually display it, or we show the changes. So, now we can test for key down. That's going to be plus motion, and we're going to want to test self.y plus motion, if that's going to test if it is greater than self.maxy. So if we've gone past the bottom of the screen, then okay, we're fine. Actually, we want to be testing if this is not. So if it's not less than zero, or if it's not greater than the screen width, then we're going to be able to move. Because if it is, then we don't want it to move, because that way it's going to be moving outside of the screen. So now we can test this for the left and right keys. First we'll do left, self.x minus motion. It's going to be less than zero. Sorry, this should be plus as well. Key down is moving down. Key X is subtracting. Got to keep track of everything that we're working with, especially when we're setting up motion events, because each direction is very crucial. Key right plus motion is going to be greater than self.max X. Move is equal to true. Self.x plus motion. Okay, so that's all the testing that we needed to do, but now we need to determine if, whether or not we actually moved. So if, if we did move, that's when we'll go ahead and move our panel, or what it is that we're working with. So move panel, self.panel, to self.y, the new position, and self.x. And then we're going to go ahead and show these changes. Perfect. Okay, our function is done. Now if we move over to our, our main script, once I find it, <laughs> okay, we've got our player. We can actually add into our, our running loop object player 
that can go ahead and move with the key that we've just set up. Cool. We should be good to go. Let's run this. Now I can move him around with the arrow keys, and I can't go past the top left, uh, the bottom sides. We've restrained the character from leaving the screen, but he, he's still able to move around. Awesome. Very, very awesome. This is exactly what we wanted. We created a moving, playable player, or so to speak. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, we're going to be able to work more with this very, very soon, but I wanted to get this entity, um, or at least this object, as part of our collection. We're, we can work with things like this, and we, we're actually going to be able to explore a new world with this sort of setup. Thanks again, guys, and I'll talk to you in another tutorial.